now that you've already downloaded your video, it's going to be in your download folder right here. And you're going to go to your download folder, find your video that's going to be somewhere right here. You're going to make a new folder, and I've already made mine. So right click, new folder, and then you're going to make chroma key, 04 chroma key. That's the new folder that you're going to make. Okay, I'm going to delete this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag the video that you downloaded into your new folder that you created, and it's going to be in here. So I have demo for period one, period six, and I'm going to do period three. So I'm going to right click. Actually, I'm not going to do it. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to start Premiere Pro, and you should be at this part right here. You don't have to go any further than that. You just wait right there. Okay, and if you went further than that, you need to go back and start from here. So I'm going to start a new project. And I'm going to name this project uh, Chroma Key Practice. And then I'm going to put period 3 because you guys are my period 3, so on and so forth, right? For other periods. And then I'm going to give it a location of where I want to save this project file. I'm going to click on Browse and I'm going to go to Desktop and I'm going to go to 04 Chroma Key. And then I'm going to click choose and then click. I'm going to I'm going to pull this up right here. Okay. Once I click OK, you're going to see a purple project file pop up right here. All right. See that purple project file pop up right there? Okay. That is this project that just got started right here. And then again, this is not brand new. You guys already learned this, but this is just for video purposes. You're going to click on file, click on new sequence and then you're going to select DSLR 1080p 1080p 30 frames per second and I'm going to name this and I copied the name paste chroma key practice period 3 for you guys you don't have to put the period 3 you just put chroma key practice and it's fine okay for those of you who need to see it better right there all right so and then I'm going to click OK and I have a new sequence I'm going to go to the editing tab. Right now I'm in the graphics tab. I'm going to go to the editing tab. And then you will see your sequence right here on the bottom left. And then I will go import my video. So file, import, desktop, chroma key, bring in that video. And that's all you have to do for now. So you have five minutes to go do that. If you have all right, so the next thing you're going to do here is you are going to drag your video into your timeline like this and a lot of you guys tend to keep it really small like that what you want to do is you want to use the plus and minus key on the keyboard to make the timeline bigger or smaller basically zooming in and out or you can click and drag right here to zoom in and out okay I'm gonna cut the part out that I don't need because I can tell where I need to cut out by by looking at the audio wave I'm gonna to have to cut out somewhere right here because I'm gonna start talking Hi, my name is... All right. So I only take the part that I need, that part right here, drag it over. The end is like right here. I'll end on a smile. Okay? So it's roughly eight minutes, uh, eight seconds and like five frames. Okay, I'm not going to really watch that. The next part is the most important part. That part's not new. This is the most important part, is to click on the effects tab right here. Okay? I'll write that down. Click on the Effects tab right there. And then when you click on the Effects tab, it'll take you to the Effects Workspace. And then what you're going to have to do is some of you guys will get a blank Effect Workspace and you freak out. Don't worry. It's there. It's just messed up. You have to click on Windows. Click on Workspace. Uh, not click on Workspace. Scroll down to Workspace and then scroll down to Reset Save Layout. Okay? For those of you who can't see. Once you reset the save layouts, everything will be reset right here. Once you reset save layout, you'll be able to search for the effect that you want right here. The effect that you want, I'll zoom in, is ultra key. Once you type in ultra key, ultra key will pop up right here underneath video effects keying. You're going to have to drag this and then put it on your video file that you want to use the ultra key effect on. It only affects one video file. So if you have like multiple video files or multiple video clips on the timeline, it only affects that one clip that you dragged it onto. So 
click, hold, and then drag down here and put it on your video layer. Once you drag it on, uh, nothing happened. Why didn't the green screen get removed? Well, you have to designate what color you want to remove. The ultra key will pop up right here on the left. What you want to do is go down to key color, scroll over to the right here, and click on this thing called the eyedropper tool. That eyedropper tool is going to allow you to pick whatever color you want to remove to turn that part into transparency. Okay? So if I want to remove green, I click green, it's gone. If I want to remove red, I click red, I'm kind of gone too. Okay? Because what is the color of skin tone for most people? Red. Pinkish, right? And we picked red, so my skin tone has some red to it. Does that make sense? So I get, I get removed too. And if I want to remove white, I'm going to click on my teeth. You're going to see the white on my shirt here and my teeth kind of go away. You see it? Okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Ugly. Okay? But that's what I want you to do. Remove the green. You have five minutes to go do that. Okay, so the next phase of your lesson is to add a background plate. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Google. You're going to go type in Google search. Okay, I, I actually I, I typed in background plate for images and, and I got plates and I was like, okay. <laughs> so, but anyways, what I wanted was, uh, I wanted a background, let's say I want a brick wall, okay? The best backgrounds you'll see are the ones that are large uh, dimensions like this, okay? You want something that's uh, like 2,000 by 2,000 would be perfect. But, you know, just, just find something. You know, just, just because it's funny, I use a plate, okay? Just because it's funny. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to save image as, and then I'm going to designate where I want to save my image, and I'm going to put it in the folder that is on the desktop, 04 chroma key. I'm going to put it in there, and I'm going to call this the background plate. Oh, I did, didn't I? Okay, that's why I'm a math major. So I save it, and the background plate is now saved here in this folder, the chroma key folder. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Premiere Pro, and then I'm going to import, file new import, bring in my plate, and then I drag my plate, and I put it on top of my video, but then the plate's on top of my video. You need to put the video on top of the plate, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the video and put it on top of the plate. Now the plate is behind my video that has a transparency, okay? But the, but the, uh, I want to move the video, I, mean, I want to move the background plate to the lower level for video one, and then I'm going to bring the video layer to video two, because later on I'm going to put the lower third, okay? So the plate is really small because remember I said the bigger the dimension the better, okay? But I'm downloading a low quality photo so I'm going to get low quality results, which is fine. It's just practice, okay? If you can find high quality video, I mean, or high quality photo, you can, you can uh, use a high quality photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the photo layer, or the, it's a video layer still. You're going to select the photo and then you're going to adjust the size so that you have a real background plate. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to give you three minutes to go do that. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the graphics tab. Once you click on the graphics tab, you'll be in the graphics workspace. And this is where we're going to do the lower third. And the lower third can be created by using the shape tool, which is click and hold. Click and hold the pen tool, and you'll get the shape tool. You can use a circle or a rectangle. It's up to you, whichever one you want to use. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle, a big enough rectangle, to fit my name and my title. Okay? And here, it's just like Photoshop on the far right. You want to change the color of this thing? Right click. I mean, not right click. Just click on it. I choose a web color because, you know, if you throw it on YouTube, it, it won't, like, get all weird, funky-looking colors and stuff. So I just click a light blue. I want a light blue right there. And then 
you'll see that a new layer was created for you right here above your video layer. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this to span the whole, the whole um, <clears throat> in and out point. <clears throat> because if I don't, look what happens. It'll disappear in the middle of it. Okay, it'll disappear. So I want it to span the whole thing, the whole in and out point. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the text tool. Okay, if I use the text tool and I click right here and then I start typing, okay, this text tool is not its own layer. It is being combined with the layer of the rectangle. So that's not what I want. What I want is to drag the playhead, and this is the critical part, <laughs> drag the playhead off of the in and out points here, okay, or this main sequence. You're going to click here and watch what happens down here. You're going to click, and then you see how there's a new layer made for the text, okay? So I'm going to type in Mr. Hang, teacher, and then just like Photoshop, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to change the size right there. Make it smaller. So Mr. Hang, all right? And then I'm going to drag it, put on the top, more upper layer. And then you'll see, and I can click here on this uh, move tool or move, uh, yeah, move tool. And then you're able to move the name and place it wherever the uh, shape is. And then if it doesn't span the whole in and out point, it'll disappear. So I'll make it span the whole in and out point. This is all you do. It's basic. It's not meant to be artistic. Just make it happen. Okay?